Hey everybody, Brock from Brock's Performance. On a previous episode, we asked people what they'd like to see, and one of the things that they said was they, they'd really like to see a walk around of the our 2009 ZX6. Now, this bike, it's a completely stock engine, but it's been set up for drag racing. This is a legitimate nine second 600, and, and what that means, and I say that like it's rare because it is very rare. You're not going to see a lot of 600s going into the nines in a quarter mile. So what does it take to do that? The answer to that is, is, is it takes excruciating detail. You're going to have to have a rider on the bike. I'm not jumping on this bike and going nine anything and I've been riding for a long time. I'm just too big. Uh, these bikes like lighter riders, they don't have a lot of torque, so a smaller frame rider they can get going and you don't have to worry about as much wind resistance and all the things that a lower powered bike has to worry about when you try to make it go quickly. Uh, if you want to come over, uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit here. We let Jeremy Teasley jump on this bike and uh, you can see here, he had a 156 60 foot, ran a 416 and a 330. 631 at 100, 113 in the eighth mile, ran a 981 at 139.06 miles an hour. What does that take? Well, horsepower wise, and that's why I have this here. Um, just to give you an idea, this bike, like I said, completely stock. It does have Allison, it does have Petron. The blue line is MR12. And uh, you can see we made uh, 120 and some change. Um, on 87 octane pump, it still made 115. And what we've done, we do have a power commander on it. We flashed the ECU to give us some additional RPM, but we also put a uh, map selector switch. So when the operator comes in, position number one is for pump gas. Position number two is for MR12. He doesn't have to have a computer. He doesn't have to do anything. It's all set up and ready to go. We didn't bump the rev limiter up very much on this bike, but if you want to come and take a look, we're actually shifting it on the tack at 16,600 RPM. Now, <laughs> these tacks are a little optimistic. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, the actual rev limiter setting on this bike is right at 15,000 RPM. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're getting the most out of the engine as we can without going crazy. I mean, we could turn the rev limiter to 20,000 if we want, but it'd blow the bike up. What else does it take? Chassis, clutch, gearing, it's all a combination of everything that has to work together. What I'll do is we'll just sort of start at the front and go back. Um, obviously, can't have mirrors if it's gonna, if you're gonna, you know, a mirror, it takes 12 horsepower to push these things about 140. You're not getting into the nines with that. Uh, the windscreen, we went with the, uh, with the zero gravity here. We don't have a double bubble. We don't want it taller. We want to keep the, the, the frontal area of the bike as low as, as small as possible. Now you can see that we've lowered, we've lowered the front end right here about uh, that's about an inch and a quarter from the top down which makes it really nice so if you want to ride on the street you just leave it unstrapped for the drag strip come over here we've got our tie down strap and our radio mount strap bracket kit it surprises me how many people don't realize just exactly what a strap kit does so i'm going to show you real quick all right so when the new owner rides this bike off this afternoon, the strap will be on the bike, but it'll be loose, right? If the strap's loose, then the only lowering of the bike is really in the front here and also in the back with our dog bones. So the suspension works just like stock. Let's just say, for grins, he pulls up to a stoplight and there's another dude on a 600 and gives him one of these, yo man, you wanna go? Street racing is illegal and dangerous, don't do it. This is a hypothetical situation. So what does the owner have to do? If he wants to get this bike lower so it's less prone to wheelie, all he's got to do is grab the strap, grab the front brake, 
push forward and he's just lowered the bike and stiffened up the front end so that it doesn't want to uh, have a slide hammer effect when you leave the line. All right, so then that way, and this is how we race it at the drag strip also. Once he gets to his destination, we just come over here, press the button, strap loosens back up, and we're ready to go again. So anyway, it's just a very easy, convenient way to lower a bike. It's temporary. You don't want to ride around with it strapped completely on the street. Some guys do. They like that look. It's up to you. Uh, what do we got? Worldwide bearings, ceramic wheel bearings. Let's see, moving back, we do have a, a wrist kill. So if you're going to go drag racing, most organizations require that. Like I said, the engine's completely stock, 100%. It's never been out of the bike. Now the clutch is a, uh, it's a hybrid configuration that I came up with using some ZX-10 parts, our spring kit with adjustable top hats so we can adjust the spring pressure. These bikes, not only are they critical on spring pressure, if you got too much, it's hard to get the bike rolling. If you have too little, the clutch wants to slip. But a lot of the, a lot of the smaller riders don't exactly have Gorilla Grip hands, so they will fine tune the clutch to their liking. Some of them like, some riders like it softer, some, are, some riders like it a little stiffer, just sort of depends on what you want. Uh, coming back here, obviously it has a beautiful exhaust. This was a, uh, this is a one-off uh, prototype. It's full titanium. We work with different manufacturing partners all over the world. Um, the company we work with here, they're in Japan and they are titanium experts. They use this exact exhaust pipe at the eight hours of Suzuka and got on the podium. This is a badass exhaust. Uh, we didn't make it available for the ZX6s because badass exhaust costs badass money. You're looking at a $2,000 exhaust for a 600 and we just didn't think the market was there, but it sure is nice for us to make for a beautiful exhaust, super light, that makes great power. Moving back a little, I think you can see here, we use our window links to lower the uh, to lower the bike, uh, and we've got it set up right now to where it's it's perfect for the drag strip when it's all the way strapped. When you loosen up the front, it comes up a little bit. You've got all your suspension, so it's actually a really nice bike to ride. Ceramic wheel bearings also in the rear. It has our O-ring chain with the O-rings removed. Let me just show you a little something there. I know my road race buddies are going, why does he take so long? Man, I'm not, I'm not. We don't use these things a lot. <laughs> so the enemy of 600, the any, enemy of any engine that just doesn't have an abundance of horsepower is friction. Friction, aerodynamics, everything. You've got to do everything you can to make the bike as slippery and as friction free as possible. I want you to take your, your bike, put it up on a rear stand and just do this. This thing, this thing will coast for days. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, it, you, but that's one of the things you really have to look for on the 600s. Uh, the other thing, you know, we've got our, we've got our fully adjustable kickstand here, which makes it nice. We can, we can dial it in exactly where we, where we want. There's, if, if there's one thing that sucks, it's being at the racetrack, having to go to the restroom, and not having a side stand on your bike. So you got to have somebody hold it for you. Come on, it's a street bike. If, if the weight of this is the difference between you winning and losing a race, you need to do more homework to have a faster bike so you can afford a kickstand. I think that's really it. Like I said, Power Commander, oh, of course it's got a Sprint filter, uh, pure P08 F185. We, we, we're doing everything we can to make this thing go fast. And that's really it. The owner's gonna be here in maybe, a, maybe an hour or so. Oh, we do have a full spectrum lightweight battery underneath here. And also you can see where we step the seat. It really is all, it, it really is all about the little details. I personally have about 40 hours of my own time into making this thing right. So I think the owner's gonna be very, very happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
killer. And I tell you what, you take your average guy on a bone stock Hayabusa up in the air, just rides it off the track to the quarter mile, this little 600 will put its little 600 foot in its butt. It's, these, these things will really catch you by surprise. They used to have a race down in Florida that was at an old, at an old airstrip, and I had my 600, and I beat Hayabusa's. They didn't quite have it. It, it wasn't even an eighth mile. And we, I just tear out on the on those those fast bikes, and they didn't have the ability to catch me. I, I won 30 races in one day, all on bigger, much faster motorcycles than my 600. These things, once you get used to them, and and you really learn how to ride them, these will teach you how to ride too, because they don't have the torque. Uh, well, torque. That's the other thing, gearing wise, to get these little things to roll. This bike is screaming at almost. Matt, almost on the peak limiter in high gear in order to get it to leave. So a little bit of a pain on the street. It, it tacks up a little bit much, but very quickly just throw a, a tooth on the front sprocket and go on a trip if you want to. So there is a difference between the street gearing and the uh, and the drag strip gearing. But you know the way it is now, if you're driving around on the street, this gearing's fine, and he could ride straight over to the drag strip, make some runs have a real fast bike and ride it home so anyway just wanted to sort of show you uh you know walk around to this thing we don't do very many 600s i don't see us doing very uh, very more in the future but i wanted to let you know exactly what we did to get this bike where it is i'm brock from brock's performance until next time we'll see you then